Hello there, this is Sam, and this is episode 54 of the Victor Prep Vocab Podcast. I'm going to start this episode with a quote from one of my favorite books, which is Frank Herbert's Dune. If you haven't read Dune, and I know I've said this about a number of books to you guys, but if you haven't read Dune, please think about reading it. It's an amazing book. And this quote in particular is sort of a little poem or phrase from the book that was used by some of the educated people in this fictional world when they were faced with fear or danger in their lives. And it's called the Bene Gesserit Litany Against Fear. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over me and through me, and when it has gone past, I will turn the inner eye to see its path. Where the fear has gone, there will be nothing. Only I will remain. I love this, by the way, because it reminds me every time I read it that fear is just a feeling, and whatever fear you have in your life, for whatever you're afraid of, you can move past it, and it's important to remember that. Anyway, let's review the words from episode 53. Mendacious, mendacious, that means lying or simply not telling the truth. To be mendacious, to be a liar. Fractious, fractious, typically used when talking about children. It means fighting a lot irritable, grumpy, or bad-tempered. Fractious, when used to describe a group of people or an organization perhaps, means difficult to control. So the group of people was fractious. They were difficult to control, difficult to handle. Lassitude, lassitude, that's a state of lack of energy, mental weariness, tiredness, sluggishness. And our final word from last time was zephyr. Zephyr. A zephyr is a soft, gentle breeze. Our first word for a new episode is artless. Artless. That's spelled A-R-T-L-E-S-S. So before I give you the definition, Just think about that word. Artless. A-R-T-L-E-S-S. Well, we know what less means. It means less of something, fewer of something. So, artless, just looking at the word, seems to say without art or less art. So, we already have an idea that it maybe means without something, less of something, artless. So, What does it mean? Well, artless means without guile or deception. So think about an innocent child, maybe a 10-year-old child. They're not out to try and trick you. They're not going to try and scam you. They're naive. They don't have a lot of experience in life. You could say that the average child is artless. They're innocent, simple, and childlike. I mean, of course, (laughs) you may know a child that is scheming (laughs) and and plotting and so on, but in general, children are artless. They're not trying to scam you. They're natural and simple. They're not out to deceive you. So that's what artless means. And artless, when it's used to describe an adult, can sometimes be a little bit negative. Because it sort of means maybe that you're too simple, that people can easily deceive you because you're just so naive. Now, artless is one of those tricky words that, depending on the context, the meaning can change slightly. It still has the general same meaning, but be aware that, for example, artless can simply mean lacking art. So if artless is used to describe, say, someone's dance, the dance was artless, it might mean that it was not a very good dance. It lacked skill. 
it lacked art. So it can mean that when used for a person, it means they're simple and natural, they're ingenuous, free from cunning. They're they like the opposite of a fox, <laughs> if we think foxes are cunning. So, yes, be aware of that. In general, it means, yes, for a person, they're simple, innocent, ingenuous, and so on. And for a piece of art or a skill, like someone's art in terms of painting or singing, if you describe a piece of work as artless, it generally means it's not very good, it's too simple, it lacks skill. Some synonyms of artless are natural, ingenuous, naive, simple, innocent, childlike, guileless. Our second word is insipid. Insipid. That's spelled I-N-S-I-P-I-D. Insipid. Insipid means lacking flavor. So that can be used in many different ways. It could simply be used for something you're tasting. So you have a dish that someone's made for the first time and they don't make it very well and there's not enough salt or enough spices in it. You could say that dish was quite insipid. It didn't have much flavor. It was bland. Some synonyms are bland, flavorless, tasteless, and weak. Insipid definitely has a connotation of, of being weak. So if your coffee was insipid, it definitely didn't have enough coffee taste in it. You know what I mean? It doesn't simply mean tasted bad. It definitely, it definitely has an idea of not strong enough. So an insipid curry might be a curry that doesn't have enough of the right flavorings in, the right spices in. It doesn't simply just mean tasted bad. Of course, something insipid is bad tasting, but it really has that connotation of the lack of, like the lack of uh, flavor. It wasn't intense enough. There's a secondary usage for insipid that isn't to do with food. And you could, you could use insipid to describe pieces of art. So if you, you could say his paintings were insipid, it means they were uninspired, flat, dull, and boring. And anything really could be described as insipid. You could say, my excitement level was insipid, or I was feeling insipid about going to this concert. So it means unimaginative, uninspiring, characterless, boring, dry, tedious, tired, or stale. So think of the last movie you saw or the last TV show that you watched that you would describe as being insipid. So <laughs> I'm sure there are many things that you've seen that you wouldn't want to watch again. You just think, oh my goodness, that was just so insipid. Our third word is garner. Garner. That's spelled G-A-R-N-E-R. -E garner. It's a verb. And to garner means to gather or collect. And when we say gather or collect, it really means usually information. So it doesn't mean, you could say, I'm going to go garner some berries. And that would be valid. But usually garner means garner some information. So imagine you're a detective, like Sherlock Holmes <laughs> or whoever, Poirot, Miss Marple, and you're trying to solve a crime. You want to, you, you know there are various suspects, there's some mysterious murder or some jewels have been stolen, and you want to work out who did it. You need information. You need to go and garner some information. So you're gonna go interview people or look around with a magnifying glass. That is garnering information. It means to gather or collect. Some synonyms are accumulate, a mass, assemble. So, yeah, um, it's quite simple. It really only has that meaning, meaning to collect information or to gather information. Really, just trying to remember that image of 
your favourite detective, whoever that might be, could be a Sherlock Holmes, could be a Poirot or whoever, and really think about them looking around and garnering information to solve the mysterious crime. Our fourth and final word is enigma. Enigma, that's a noun, and enigma is spelled E-N-I-G-M-A, enigma. An enigma is anything, it could be, it could be a person, it could be a thing, it could be some sort of problem. Basically, it's anything that is mysterious, puzzling, or difficult to understand. So, an enigma could be a maths problem. You're doing maths and there's just a really puzzling problem. You just cannot work it out. It's an enigma. An enigma could also be, like we mentioned before, could be a Sherlock Holmes case. Something very mysterious happened. No one else can understand it. Even Sherlock Holmes is finding it difficult to understand what's going on. You could say that that problem is an enigma. Some synonyms of enigma are mystery, puzzle, riddle, conundrum, paradox, or simply problem. Something quite interesting that might help you remember enigma is that in in comic books there was a character called the Riddler. I don't know if I don't know if any of you guys know about comic books. I <laughs> I don't really sorry. I really don't know anything about comic books, and that's why I'm laughing, because, <laughs> yeah, because um, I, I was just Googling to find ways that it might be easy to remember Enigma, and I found out that the character, the Riddler, who was in in one of the Batman movies and in these comic books, in the Riddler's name, his actual name was Edward Nigma, so his first initial was E, and his last name was Nig- Nigma, so E Nigma. So that, that's kind of a, a little in-joke from the comic book writers that the Riddler's name was Edward Nigma, so E. Nigma. And what I didn't know as well is there's apparently another character actually called Enigma in the, the DC Comics universe. So if you can remember the Riddler, who, who told riddles which are difficult to solve problems, his name was Edward Nigma, E. Nigma, <laughs> Then that's a kind of an obscure way of remembering what this what this word means. <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't know why I'm laughing. <laughs> anyway, right, <laughs> those <laughs> those are our words, and now let's just briefly go over those words. Artless, artless. That means natural, naive, simple childlike and when describing a piece of art or someone performing a skill it means without skill without finesse maybe it's awkward or not that good insipid 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 means lacking flavor especially in the in the sense of not being strong enough like a very weak bland tasting coffee or a very weak curry garner Garner, that means to gather or collect, especially meaning information. And enigma, enigma, that's a person or thing or problem of some kind that's mysterious or difficult to understand. So now let's do our test sentences. I'll give you the sentences, you try and work out which word I'm referring to, and afterwards I'll give you the answers. The book was so uninspired and dull that I couldn't finish half of it before I gave up and started reading another. Insipid. Politicians are always trying to gather as much information as they can about the opinions and thoughts of the voting public. Garner. Before their teenage years, most children are innocent and naive to the ways of the world. Artless. Sherlock Holmes, the famous fictional detective, would often try and solve the most mysterious or difficult problems, things other policemen and investigators found baffling. Enigma. 
So guys, those were our words for today. And a little update about everything else that's going on. I'm still working on the video stuff. That is coming, <laughs> don't worry. It's I'm just still practicing on making sure that the videos look right and the lighting is right. And um, cause it, it's a little different from doing a regular audio podcast because I need to look at the camera all the time. And yeah, it's it's definitely different. And I'm still getting used to that. But the plan is still to do live videos where I'll do GRE verbal problems. I'll teach words. We'll be able to interact. It is going to be good. So stay tuned for that. I will keep updating you. Until then, please like and share the podcast, leave a review, all that good stuff. And also, you can always just email me, sam at victorprep.com. I will get that email, don't worry. And I will try and reply as soon as I can. Thank you so much for being listeners. I value everyone. So have an awesome rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow.